My name is Olivia Shilunga. This is my story. I grew up more closely with my mother. We had a very good bond. She will interact with us, and my mother was always there. Where even if you cry, she wants to know why is those, are those tears there. I loved her so much that I would do anything for my mother. In 2010, I was arrested coming from Brazil. I was so much afraid that I didn't want to call home because I, I didn't know how my mom was going to take the news. I was much worried about my mother than anybody else because I knew what kind of a person she is. She is a very soft-hearted woman when it comes to her children. Um, She's given us so much love and the fact that she taught us to live with the little that we have and not envy what the other person is having. After my arrest, I was convicted to three years, eight months. And uh, from there, I stayed in prison. But then things were not very much um, easy because I thought so much about my children, about my mom that is doing it on her own. And uh, I knew how hard it was. And also the fact that I was there, it was already too much for her. It became worse, whereby she was even at the end of the day, they found out that she had a hypertension and diabetes at the same time. Me in prison, her health, the children, you know, it was too much for her to bear. I knew that she was sick, but I didn't know that it was to that extent whereby I'm going to lose my mom. Because my prayer always was, I can't wait to come out of this place so that I can be united again with my children and my mother, more especially my mother. For me to tell her and to show her I'm a changed person, because I started writing about the project that I want to start running now while I was there. And I really wanted her to be so much part of it because I knew that I've disappointed her so much, I've brought her down so much. Monday morning, one of the officers called me to tell me that, no, there are people from home that called last night. They were saying that they are coming to visit you. Didn't anybody come to see you? Then I said, no. So I left. I didn't take it so serious. Monday passed. Tuesday, the time we were moving back to our cells, she called me. I just stood at the door and I looked and I said, mm -mm. this time, me being called in the office, no something is wrong tell me what you're supposed to tell me then she said okay um actually we received a call from home that before she even said anything i just told her it's mom then she said yes mom have left us and so so and that by that time i thought she was joking or it was a dream or something like that. I didn't take it that serious. But then at the end of the day, I just looked at them, both of them, coming even to like hold me. I said, no, just leave me. I stood up well, I came out, but once I got that, I fainted. I woke up, I found people sitting around me and I remembered what she told me, that mom had passed on. I said, no, my mother cannot pass on. I cried, but crying whereby tears are not coming out. Thinking about the situation where I am right now, there's nothing I can do. I can't go out of here. Even if I want to scream, I will just scream, scream myself to death. God, why? Prison, my mom. Is it not already too much for me? God, why didn't you just take me? leave and leave my mother it's so painful to know that you were never there when she really needed you the most more especially when she was so sick i couldn't attend the funeral i couldn't be there with the family and um, i already missed her so much it was so painful to know that i'll never see my mother again it made me so angry that today i would really want to turn the hand of time mm -hmm.